Good morning and welcome to the Covert Nets podcast. My name is Abigail Covert. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is my podcast where I talk all about my knitting and fiber adventures. Today is Saturday, April 3rd, 2021, and I'm coming to you from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, you can find me on the internet as at covert underscore knits on Instagram and covert knits on Ravelry. I'll put that on the screen for you. And it's also in the description box below where I have all of the show notes for anything I talk about on this episode. So this episode is going to be a little bit different than my normal episodes. It's what I'm calling a Covert Knits podcast special. Uh, and we are going to go through every single project bag that I have that has something in it and figure out what's in it and what I'm going to do with it. Uh, not a lot of them are actually whips. A lot of them are just yarn and uh, needles and things ready to start projects. But some of those projects probably won't be started anytime soon. So I need to get them out of the bags and back on the shelves and repurpose the bags for other projects that will get started sooner. So I'm going to do that with you today. It's called a bag parade for a reason because it's there's a lot. I have a pile over, over here and a pile over here and there's stuff in all of them. I will try to go as quickly as possible but it probably will be a long episode so just fair warning. Um, I will try to tag uh, or include bag makers if they're still making bags and yarn dyers and all of that, um, and any patterns that I talk about will be again in the description box below. Sorry if you can hear the dog barking. Uh, he's a little wound up this morning. So I just wanna mention I am wearing my uh, Golden Horizon tee by Tina Say. Um, it's one of my favorite, I'm sorry, it's not the tee, it's just Golden Horizon. Um, mine's a three quarter length sleeve. Uh, I knit it out of uh, Knit Picks. City Tweed and Hedgehog Fibers Twist Sock. Um, colorways, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, it's one of my favorites. I wear it all the time. And uh, okay, so with that, we'll jump right into bags. Um, I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down. So um, let's start over here. So this is a bearded pearl bag from back in the day. You'll see a theme. I have a lot of them. Oh, okay. So this is a project that is wound up, yarn that is wound up for a project. I have two skeins here. It is uh, Twisted Owl Fi Fiber Studio. And this is their Super Sport. It's an 80-20 merino nylon. And the colorway is, oh, sorry. I'm not even getting near the camera. Um, the colorway is Penny Slots. And I am planning to do a flax light, um, a child size flax light out of these for a friend, uh, friend's baby or child whose birthday was actually last month. So I need to get this cast on. <laughs> um, it is sport weight. The flax light is a fingering weight, but I'm going to knit um, a one size smaller than I was planning to and I make it work. So. Anyway, that's what that is. That is a project that needs to continue to be in the bag because I need to get started on that. Um, I don't have the needles in there, but that is project bag number one. Okay, um, let's go to the next bag. So this project bag is a bag I got, um, I'll just put the tag up there, Impware Home. Um, I did get this at my local yarn shop. Okay. So this is actually yarn from a dyer. It's wound up as well. And needles and everything are in there. These are going to be just a pair of uh, vanilla socks. Um, this dyer actually just recently stopped dyeing. This is Yankee Dyer Yarns. And she just in the last month or two stopped dyeing. This was um, her base Yankee Soul 2, which is an 80-20 merino nylon. Um, and the colorway was Alternative Facts. And it's kind of got a rainbow in there. And while this is wound up and ready to go, I may save this for Pride Sockathon, which is a knit along I run every June, where I knit as many socks as possible in the month of June. And for each pair I, that I complete, I donate $25 to the Trevor Project. So, um, and all the socks are either rainbow or Pride themed. So I might, I might save that project and cast it on in June and it's already wound up so I will put that over with my pride socks okay that was bag two this is a project bag from 
Moonstone Makes, who's a yarn dyer that I love. If you've watched regularly, you'll have seen this. This was um, a special bag that she did. Um, it was a mystery bag set that she did at Christmas, um, and she made the bags. So this is another thing of yarn, and the yarn's wound up, but... Uh, Sorry, they're all things of yarn. Uh, this is another thing of sock yarn. Yarn is wound up, but uh, it came that way. So this is yarn from um, Knit Circus Yarns. Um, it's their Greatest of Ease base, which is again is again is an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon. And this colorway is Paris is Always a Good Idea. And these are supposed to be socks for a friend whose birthday is in May. So I need to get that cast on. And the needles and all that are in the bag. That is a project that's ready to go. Okay. This is actually a whip. So this is another bag from the Bearded Pearl. This is an old one as well. It's got my fun construction men on it. And this is, if you've been a longtime viewer of the podcast, you'll know this is one of my oldest whips. And it's been on needles for ever and ever. This is the Lily Pilly Wrap. You can see it's been in the bag for a long time. It's all crinkled. This is the Lily Pilly Wrap by Amba O'Brien. And I am using Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light, in colorways um, Antler, Smokestack, and Coquette, which is the pink. And I think I stopped here in this lace section because I got off on a lace repeat and I just haven't had the brain power to fix it, but I would love to get this project finished. It's my longest standing whip that's not a, um, that is not a sock uh, blanket, sock yarn blanket. So that is what is in this bag. And for those of you that watched my last episode and I talked about trying to check out, do uh, use the Gideon method, uh, this will be a project that I try to complete with that um, whip method. Sorry. Um, here are the other two. And this is being knit on, I believe it's a US 4. Nope, US 5, 3.75 millimeter. So that is a whip to be finished. Go over there in the whip pile. And then this next one is yet another bag from Bearded Pearl. Uh, it's my luck of the Irish bag. And this is another whip. Another one that I have had on the needles and if you've watched for a long time, uh, will have seen. This is the only sweater I have on the needles right now for myself. This is my second Rift Tee. Rift uh, Tee is by Jacqueline Cieslack. Again, it's been in the bag forever. You can see the wrinkles. This is being knit out of Knit Picks Kotlin in the colorway Cyan, I believe. Let's see if I have the, let's see if I have a tag on this one. I do. Yep, Kotlin, Cyan. Um, when their Kotlin is 70% uh, Tangui, Tangui, cotton, 30% linen. Okay, so I'm already split for the front and back. Um, you can kind of see here, this is, that's where I've split. Um, and you just, the other, the, so I'm working on the back right now and the front is on hold. So I need to get back to this, but I put it on hold because I need to finish my parent sweaters, which again, if you are a regular viewer, you'll have known the saga of that. But this will be, I would like to get this finished because it's a beautiful summer sweater. Um, Kotlin um, is a, you know, lightweight. It's great. I actually already have one, a Rift Tee in the Kotlin um, in a yellow color and it's washable. I've worn it, I wear it all the time in the summer. It's a great layering piece. Um, so it's perfect for work. I can wear it over a nice dress shirt. So I would like to get this second one done. So that is a work in progress that needs to get finished. Okay, so I've made it through one of the big bags that I had yarn in. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this is a Mrs. Brown's bag um, from Jody of the Grocery Girls. Bag. 
And I believe this is in, this is the Yellow Brick Road colorway from Le Bienne May, which is why this yarn is in here. So this yarn is just, it's literally skeins of yarn in a bag. Um, last fall, I think, uh, the grocery girls were doing um, a West Knits knit along and uh, for Stephen West shawls and I was going to knit the dotted rays out of these skeins of uh, Labiana May singles. This is their um, Merino singles, which is 100% Merino. And this is Yellow Brick Road. This is uh, Yellow Brick Road Graffiti is the middle one. And then the top one is the Grello colorway. So I was going to fade the three. Um, and I still plan to, that is what this project will be, but probably this yarn could go back on the shelf because I don't know that I'll get it cast on anytime soon. Uh, Michael over at Peace for Peace Crafting was doing a, a knit along that you could do a Stephen West shawl just this month. And I thought, oh, I'll get that cast on. And I never did. So that's what's in that bag. That yarn is going to go back on the shelf because I don't know when I'll get that cast on next. Um, this is another Beard of Pearl bag, Christmas bag. So my guess is that there's something Christmassy related in here. Oh, these are leftovers. So this is the leftover um, Kotlin that I had from my first thrift tee, which is in the creme brulee colorway. There you go. And so I had a couple skeins of that and a couple skeins of Kotlin from another project that I knit um, for a friend's little boy in the color Ivy. So that's about half a skein in the Ivy pretty dark green, and then almost a full skein in the canary. That's the canary colorway. And I think I was going to use these to make um, fancy dishcloths. So that's why these leftovers are all in one bag. And I use dishcloths as Christmas presents. So that will definitely be a project that I get to, but not anytime soon. Okay, next up. This bag is, I forget who the maker is. Let's see if there's a tag in here. I don't see one. I will make sure that I put the maker um, down below. I think it's Nanette Wake. I have a couple of her bags. Um, the cat, they're woven. She weaves the fabric. Unfortunately, the cat kind of got to this one. So she weaves the fabric. And then she sews bags out of it and then she lines it. So yeah, it's Nanette Wake. Um, and I'm not sure what I was planning to make with this, but this is a skein of Wonderland yarns and it's their Mad Hatter base, which is a sport weight. Um, and this is the colorway. Um, it's their Uncommon Nonsense um, collection and it's Happy Summer Days. And obviously it's rainbow. So I don't know if I was going to do sport socks with it or what I was going to do. I think that's what I would like to do with it, is sport weight socks. But that's going to go back on the shelf into the pride socks bin, pride sock along bin, because I'm not sure what I was going to do with it. It did have needles in here, though. So apparently I had a plan, but that's going to go back onto the shelf in the pride socks bin. So put that with that. This is another little baggie. I, uh, these are it's just a stitch red on them. I've had them for years. They were a gift. They're just the snap. Um, this is leftover yarn. I made multiple hats out of this. This is, and well, it started out as um, I made pillows for my mother a few years ago. I've had the yarn for years. This is um, Manos de Uruguay Maxima. And I believe this colorway is sand. And I don't have the tag, but I think this was just a teal. And I used the original to do two different um, pillows. And then I've also knit a couple of hats out of the sand, because I had a whole bunch of the sand. And I think I was going to knit another one of my um, just gift hats out of the leftovers of that. So that will go in my Christmas gift pile. Uh, this is one of my knotting knitting sacks. So it's fun on the outside, 
perfectly acceptable. And then on the inside, it's naughty. And what's in here? Huh. So this is, <laughs> didn't even realize this was in a bag. So about five years ago, I taught some coworkers how to knit a hat and knit hats. I had them over for an evening of knitting and I had purchased yarn at the local yarn store for each of them in the colors that they preferred. And several of them have finished the hats. One of them decided that knitting was not for her pretty much almost from the point we were casting on. So for years, this hat, um, she just had a cast on brim and a couple rows that were not very good because uh, she really hated it. Um, and I promised her that I would take the yarn and knit it and she never really pushed on it. So I just uh, have, it was sitting in a plastic bag forever. And sometime in the last year, I must have pulled it out, putting it in here, thinking I would get that done. So that is a hat. It's just a plain old um, stockinette hat. I have a pattern in here. I'm not sure if this pattern is for sale or not. It was from one of the women who works at my local yarn store. Her name, um, I think her design name is Cottage Chick Knits, and it's her basic beanie. So if you're looking for a basic beanie, you can check her out. She's a local Omaha designer. She works at one of the local yarn stores. So Cottage Chick Knits. I'm not sure the cost on that pattern, but that was the pattern that I used to teach everyone. So I'll probably get that done sometime, but I'm not sure when that will be. But at least it's being housed in this fun bag. And I can tell you right now that my coworker would really appreciate that that's the bag I have it in. Okay, um, this is a Diana Couture bag. So it's got clear pockets on the front, on the front. And it's got a D-ring here that you can attach keys or whatever to. Um, hmm, this yarn is wound and ready to go. So this is a three color uh, sport weight set that I purchased um, from my sister knits in Colorado, uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, when I was there a few years ago. It is, sorry, let me get the tag here. This is the only plucky knitter that I own, plucky knitter yarn that I own. This is their Primo Sport base. Lucky Knitter, Primo Sport. And I think they actually have um, a three color cowl um, to make. So I have these three colors. I don't know what the colorway names are. This gray is Silver Queen. So that's this one. And then the red is um, Athos. It's pretty. And then the pink is Bashful. So I've had these wound up for ages and ages. Not sure which order I'd put them in. Oh, I like that. And I think I'm still planning to make that shawl or I'm not sure that there's enough yarn here to do a night shift cowl, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do. That's going to go in the, the to be determined pile. It's beautiful yarn. I'm just not sure what project I want to knit out of it. Um, okay. Um, this is another bearded pearl bag. This one has uh, like train tickets on it, travel themed. I love to travel, so I got this bag. Um, <laughs> this is a skein of yarn that uh, one of the dogs got, so I had to wind it up into a ball. It is Bumblebee Acre Farms, or Bumblebee Acres Fiber Farm. This is their Butter Sock, which is a superwash merino. Uh, so it's 70% merino wool, 20% silk, 10% cashmere. So it's very soft. The colorway is a Harry Potter inspired colorway called Flitwick's Tree. 
and there was a shawl that I, a uh, once gained shawl that I was planning to make with this. Um, I think it's called Star Shower. I'm not 100% certain if that's the name of it. I will um, put a picture up and uh, a link in the description box below, but it's really pretty. It's got pops of different colors in there. So it's a beautiful one skein project and I'll definitely want to knit a shawl or a cowl out of it. So I think I'll probably still knit that. And it's really only wound up in, in this bag because the dog got a hold of the skein. So, um, okay. The last one in this one, this is another Diana Couture bag. It's, um, a little sock sack bag that has, um, you can open it there and then you can thread your yarn through the hole here in the top. So this is sock yarn that I just wound up and had ready to go. Um, I was just gonna make a plain pair of simple um, vanilla or, uh, or close to vanilla socks out of this yarn. It's pretty plain. It's this beigey color, beigey brown. It's really pretty. Um, this is from Nerd Girl Yarns. I've had it for years and years. And it's her Bounce and Stomp base, which is her 7525 Merino Nylon. And then the colorway is different sizes of infinity. She does lots of fandom colorways. I don't know which fandom this is from, but it's just very simple. Uh, and I was just gonna do a simple pair of vanilla socks with that. So that got wound up and then other, other shinier sock yarns came around. So that will get done eventually, but. Okay, and that's it for this bag. Uh, this is a tote from Mrs. Brown's bag as well. It's her, I think it's her knit night tote. It has, it's the one with the zipper. She doesn't have these in the shop all that often, but when she does, um, they're try and grab one. They're fantastic. Okay. Oh, I have one more bag over here on this side. So this bag <laughs> is from the Grocery Girls as well. It's their... Um, Muffy the Beaver bag. Um, it's a tote bag. It's got a Velcro pocket here at the front. It's canvas. So in this bag is just skeins of yarn. If you are a member of my knit night, you'll have seen um, this project before. I think I even posted a picture on my Instagram. Um, let's see here. There's two projects in this bag. Two projects. Okay, so this um, this all. Let's see here if I can do this. This all was going to be the stripes um, party or stripes sweater by Dre Renee Nitz, Andrea Mallory. So it is a sport weight pattern. So these four skeins here are um, Wonderland fibers sport weight that Mad Hatter base. And um, let's see here. This one is Seography. And then this one is Muchness. This one is Piece of Rudeness. And this one is the Uncommon Nonsense line Exactually. So those are the four main ones. And then I was going to hold some um, lace or some lace weights double. So this is uh, Lacey Lamb by Jade Sapphire um, Exotics. It's colorway 970. I think it's called like iron something. It's super dark charcoal, almost black. And then this is a skein. I have a couple skeins of um, Brooklyn Tweed Veil, which is their lace weight. And this is colorway Cobbler. It's a deep kind of eggplant color. And then a skein of Legacy Fiber Arts Mohair. And this is their cloud base in cotton candy. And then I was also going to use um, a little bit of their um, same base in Vanilla Bean, which is a creamy white, but I used that in a project that's in one of these other bags. But I think I'll have some left over that I could at least do one or two stripes um, in the sweater. So that is the stripes sweater. And then originally I wound up this yarn um, for the stripes sweater, but realized 
I didn't have enough yardage and it's all fingering weight. So now I need to find a different sweater for this yarn. Let me see if I've got it here. So this is um, Sweet Georgia Yarns Tough Love Sock in, uh, I think it's just their silver colorway. Yeah. So I have four skeins of this wound up. And then I have a mini set here. So all these beautiful fall colors. And this is Art Fill. And I think it was like Maple or something was the set. I bought this when I was up at Espace Tricot in Montreal in 2019. So it came as a set. And so I was going to use these as the stripes, but I think these will get striped either into um, a different sweater or some other project. And then I don't have enough of the, I don't have enough of this to do a full sweater. So I need, I was looking for um, something to add to it, which is why I went with the others, but I think uh, the mini set, but I think I need um, to find some other contrast or um, this is a, a regular color on the Sweet Georgia um, in their lineup, so I could buy another skein and just um, fade it in, because it'll be a different dye lot, because I've had this for years. Yeah, this is Colorway Silver, so Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock, Colorway Silver. So that is what was in that bag, and I'm just not sure. I'd forgotten I wound up that yarn, because I thought I was going to do the stripes with it, and then realized as I was looking more closely at the project, page um and the information that I definitely didn't have enough yarn to do the size that I needed so um in and, and make sure that it, it fit properly so anyway that's the stripes uh sweater by Andrea Mowry it will be on my needles at some point hopefully some point this year um in one of these versions okay so this is a Gilmore Girls project bag that I uh, got from uh, Birdie and Poppet. They are located in the UK and they do cute project bags. And this is yarn for um, IROC Knits. Uh, Corey, Corey from IROC Knits had a, a book, ebook come out last year called Knit Words and it's super fun patterns with um, the words that we use in knitting all the time. Um, pearl and knit and yarn over and knit two together and and cast on and all, bind off and all that kind of stuff charted out and there was a sweater and a skirt and a poncho and a pillow and a cowl and a hat and a lot of them she used um browns sh brown sheep which is a local nebraska well it's not local to me it's on the other side of the state but a uh, local nebraska yarn company um out of mitchell nebraska and i have some of their nature spun sport weight yarn in three colors um they're the oregon colors because i'm a big oregon fan um go ducks and so i was going to knit um one of the hat or cowls i think you she has a couple of the patterns are in sport and worsted so this is the sport weight so i was going to figure out which one i have the pattern book already i already purchased it and i was going to knit one of the projects out of that with these so that will be also on my needles um more than likely it'll be a gift for a friend who's a big Oregon fan as well. So that'll go in the gift pile. Okay. Um, this is another Grocery Girls tote that I got uh, free with an order from their knit shop. Uh, this is just yarn in a bag. It has not, well, one of the skeins has been wound up. Um, this is going to be, I finally figured out, uh, this yarn is a fade. Well, I'm making it into a fade. And I've been trying to find the perfect fade that this, there's enough yardage here to do for my size um, for a while. So I am going to be needing the Spectre sweater by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I'll put, have put a picture up here for you. This yarn is all of the Anne of Green Gables um, set. Uh, there was a club that Midnight Cravings did a couple of years ago now. I think it might've been even 2018. So they did a club um, for Anne of Green Gables, which I'm a huge fan of. So this was, I wound this up ages ago on um, an old ball winder that obviously I need to rewind it. So this is the Anne, of, Anne with an E colorway. And then, so this will be the top color up here. And then we will fade to 
This is the Rachel Lind colorway. These are all characters from the book. If you haven't read the book, you wouldn't know that, but there's some of the green and pink speckles in there, and it's this beautiful orange color, or it's got some orange in it. It's yellow, soft yellow. And then it will fade into um, the Diana Berry colorway, which is pink with a little bit of a cream in there. And then that will fade into the Marilla Cuthbert colorway, which is got some purples and grays in there. And then that will fade into the Gilbert Blythe colorway, which is grays and blues and a little bit of the brown, which will fade into the Matthew Cuthbert colorway, which is back to the greens and the blues and browns. So that'll be the bottom of the sweater. So that is a project that I'm dying to cast on right now, but I need to get a few things done, but I was searching and pulling and trying to find the perfect pattern and I finally found it. So that is why this is all bagged up and ready to go. I need to purchase the pattern and get the rest of the yarn wound and get that going. So that is definitely a future project. This is another bearded pearl bag. And this is, I won't pull everything out because it's kind of insane, but this is all of my kitchen cotton scraps. A whole bunch, different colors. I just have, it's just a bag of scraps. With the thought process that I would make scrappy dishcloths out of this. So this is really just a bag that's holding yarn. I need to start on them because colors in there um because it's getting over over full um this is you know lily sugar and cream um and dishy and any any kitchen cotton that i've used in the last however however long i've been knitting it's all in there so that's just a future scrappy project okay so this is an active well supposedly active whip this is another this is my most recent Theater pearl bag. It's my large sweater size bag. And this is my dad's Gramps cardigan. It's a pattern by Tin Can Knits. It is almost done. It's been in the bag forever. So it's all wrinkly. It's being knit out of Knit Picks. Wool of the Andes. Um, uh, worsted weight in their Wellies Heather. Which is dark charcoal with tweed. And uh, the sleeves are done. The body's done. I need to pick up for the neck band and do the shawl collar and then the afterthought pockets. And then this bad boy's done. Uh, I haven't touched it because I'm trying to get the body of my mom's sweater done, which also hasn't been touched, but I'll do the body of her sweater. Then I'll switch over to the collar and then I'll do her sleeves. And I have a whole plan. It's just a matter of doing it. So that is, that is an active whip in my Gideon method plan that I'm supposed to be starting here soon so that will hopefully be done sooner rather than later this one is also an active whip this is my meet me at luke's bag from lila styles and this is so close to being done i almost had it done last night but um i was not in the mood to kitchener so this is my snuggle is real cowl and i'm at the point where i have finished knitting the lining which is that mohair. This is the mohair that I was hoping to use in my stripes sweater um, from Legacy Fiber Arts. It's their cloud base and vanilla bean. And then these are um, Anzula luxury fibers, uh, charcoal and Madam is the red, charcoal is the gray. And I am just to the point where I need to Kitchener these two together. So if you'll notice, I have a couple sets of needles here um, I just wasn't in the headspace to Kitchener last night, so um, that did not happen. And then I, the only thing I have left to do is knit, um, ooh, knit the I cord um, that will be that you'll run through this top band here. Um, I'm supposed to knit the I cord in this, but I believe I will be. I've decided that I'm going to knit the I cord out of some of the leftovers of the Madam. Uh, because I have so much left over and because I like that color. And I'm not really in the mood to hold eight strands of this double in order to knit the I-cord. So that's what you would need to get the I-cord the, the right um, weight with that lace. 
So this is almost done. This is an almost finished project. So I'll put that over there in the projects pile. Okay, this is, um, this was a bag from the Grocery Girls. It was one of their sock talk kits um, last summer, I believe. Um, so it came with a whole bunch of stuff and some yarn. And in here I just have a skein of yarn, again, sock yarn, that's been wound up forever. Um, it's just ready to cast on. This also, this is Knitty in Color. I've had this yarn, I don't, I don't even know. It was one of the first um, indie dyed yarns I ever purchased. So years and years, but it's only been wound up since probably last year. Um, and this is the colorway Supernova. This is her acoustic sock, which is, seven, uh, hmm, it says 80 Superwash Merino 25 nylon. So I think it's an 80-20, but I'm not sure. It's either an 80-20 or 75-25. Um, I might save this for Pride Sockathon as well, because look at that. That's, that's rainbow yarn if I ever saw it, so... Put that in the pride sock bin. Okay. This is an active whip that I started just the other day. Um, if you've been following along for a while, I'm trying to knit a set of dishcloths every month. So this is the April set I cast on just on the first. Um, it's out of Knit Picks Dishy. This is colorway Jelly Bean, I believe. Yes, Jelly Bean Multi. And so I just have the first one cast on. This is the Chinese Waves dishcloth pattern by, um, it's a free pattern from Maggie's Rags website, but it's Margaret Radcliffe is the um, designer. And it's what I knit all of my dishcloths out of. I use a US size seven. And that's just a mindless, I don't need a pattern anymore. I've got it memorized. It's a four row repeat. So when I need to be able to talk or focus on something, I can work on that. And hopefully by the end of the month, I'll have a set of dishcloths for April and I'll have four done for the month. Okay, uh, next in this bag, this is another Lila Styles bag. It's covered in cat fur, I apologize. This is the Hocus Pocus bag. So from Lila Styles. And in here I have, <laughs> I have my Hocus Pocus mini sets from Legacy Fiber Arts that I had intended to have wound up and knit for Halloween last year. So Legacy Fiber Arts. Um, this is the Winnie Sanderson. This is the revamped Winnie Sanderson. These are the micro sock kit in their steel toes base, which is their 7525. So in this, you get 231 yards of the main color and then a 20 gram um, mini, which uh, is usually about, I think about 90 yards. I'm not sure. But so this is the Winnie Sanderson set. This one is the uh, Sarah Sanderson set. I love that one. I love them all. This one is the Mary Sanderson set. Again, I got these last fall. And then this one is the Hocus Pocus set. This one's just called Hocus Pocus, which I had wound up. I was going to cast on. And then it just sat in the bag. Because <laughs> I ran out of time. So maybe I'll get those knit up and ready for Halloween this year. I could probably put the sets back and just have the one sock in there. Okay. And you can get a full pair of socks uh, with heels, toes, and cuffs um, out of those mini sets. Okay. Ooh, this is my Hohe & Co bag. My suede, leather suede bag from, um, this was I'm not sure if they sell this color on their website. This was a special through Neighborhood Fiber Company. Super well-made bags. And in here I have one of the projects I was going to cast on for the um, Hoey Fall Knit Along in 2020. Um, I wound up one skein of this yarn. This is a 100% linen yarn. I, again, wound it up on my old ball winder. I got a new ball winder for Christmas, so I need to rewind. This is the, um, it's from Espostery Co. It's their Petite Lin, uh, which is their sport weight, 100% linen. The colorway is um, Sink Accept. My French is terrible, so there you go. Not sure that that'll actually even read on that, but. So I've got three more skeins that were not wound up. One skein wound up. This is was supposed to be the uh, 
Staple Linen Top by Hohi Locatelli. Again, for the fall knit along. Um, I need to get that cast on because it will be a perfect summer top, which it will be here soon in the Northern Hemisphere. So that is a soon to be cast on project. I have it in my Hohi and Co bag. Okay, what is in this one? This is another um, Half Naked Men bag from Beard of Pearl. Can't see it. Can't tell there was a theme. <laughs> this is a skein, just just one ball of yarn in that bag. Um, this is uh, La Vienna May uh, Merino Singles in the Water Rose colorway. Yeah, again, French, not my forte, I apologize. Water Rose, one single skein of this. And this was going to be the Paris at Midnight, Midnight in Paris uh, Cowl by Holy Locatelli. So that was always the plan for this. It would be a gift. So that will be, I need to add that to the gift knitting pile for next Christmas. That goes over there. All right. Another Lila Styles bag, another Stars Hollow themed, or Gilmore Girls themed. This is Meet Me at, in Stars Hollow. The gazebo in there. What's in this bag? Huh. Okay, so I was going to do a hat and mitt set out of these. So this is beautiful farm yarn that was gifted to me from um, a friend of my mother's who no longer knits, but she had this in her stash for a long time. I will show you the tag, but I believe the farm is no longer in business. So it was local to me um, in Honey Creek, Iowa, which is just across the river in Iowa. So this is Doze and Diva's Dairy Inc. Farmstead Sheep and Goat Milk Products from Honey Creek, Iowa. So this was... Um, it's three ply DK weight, so 200 yards a skein. And I had two skeins of it. So I was gonna do a hat and mitt set and I was gonna hold this cause it's, it is a little scratchy with some mohair that I have. And this mohair is, um, I think it's Shibui and their Kit Silk mohair. Uh, let me see, I've had this in my, yes, yeah, Shibui Silk Cloud, which is their 60% mohair, 40% silk base. And the colorway is Fjord. So, Shibui. Yeah. So, I was going to hold that double. I actually think this blue might work well as one of the stripes in my stripe sweater. I probably don't need both of the skeins of the Shibui for the hat and mitts. Something to consider. And that was just going to be gift knitting. Um, have that hat and mitt set ready for the holidays. Okay. This is, in, again, a zipper bag. It doesn't have any tag. No idea where this bag came from. So this is, I have the pattern printed out and everything. I think it's called the end paper. Yes, end paper mitts. I'm not sure who the designer is and there's no, um, I just found it on Ravelry. And it's a, I'll try to put a picture up here. Um, end paper mitts, I've had this yarn wound up for a long time. This is, or in the balls, this is um, Knit Picks Palette. And so it's the, I know this is the Oyster Heather and I don't know, um, I'm not sure what this corally color is. Um, but yeah, it was their color work mitts, fingerless mitts that I've had in the bag for years, literal years. Somebody at work mentioned that they thought that they would like that pattern and I was gonna knit them up for them and I just haven't got to that. Um, and then this is my Fringe Supply Co bag. have oh and this is just oh, there's needles in here um these are just um worsted and dk leftovers to knit um hats out of um 
I do every year. Last year, I during the heart of the pandemic, I knit a whole bunch of hats using leftovers, just Worsten DK. Um, I just came up with my own vanilla hat pattern for each weight and cast those on. So these are leftovers intending to be, again, holiday, Christmas, all those kinds of hats. I gave all the hats away that I knit last year, so... Okay, so that is the last from that pack. I have just a few more here, guys. Okay, so another bearded pearl bag. This one has a pin from Shawnee P's Corner. Okay, oh, this is a kind of an active whip. This is my Siki shawl by Don Henderson. It's a free pattern on our website. Um, it's a twisted, twisted rib shawl all the way with tassels on the end. I am knitting this out of Anzula Luxury. Let's see if I can find a tag here. Yep. Anzula Luxury Fibers Nebula in the colorway Penny. And I started this, I really enjoy it. It's a four row repeat. You just knit, knit, knit till you have 50 grams left and then you bind off and make tassels. Um, I have two balls of this and this is the first ball. So I have a lot of knitting left um, to go on this one. And this one will go on my Gideon Method plan. So I'll have two shawls and a couple sweaters on that plan. So that's a whip to be finished. Let's see, here's another Knotting Knitting Sacks, which is just beautiful flowers on the outside and then on the inside, angry, fun words. So there you go. And these are leftovers from a pair of paddle knits that I knit last year um, for my sister for her birthday. And I'm going to do the inverse. So she got black mitts with white stripes. I'm going to do, um, there's even scraps of yarn in here. I'm gonna do the opposite for me, white mitts with black stripes. I've knit so many pairs of the paddle mitts. I think I knit close to 10 pairs at this point and I have not knit a pair for myself. So that was what I was going to do with this. This is Cascade 220 Superwash um, and just colorways black and white. So that's a project for me that I probably don't need to do anytime soon since it's getting warmer here and I won't need fingerless mitts. So This is my current sock project in my favorite sock bag. This is my Whimsy Stitches bag that I have all of my pins on. You'll have seen this if you're a regular viewer. Um, these are my London socks from the Around the World in Eight Socks Pattern Club from uh, Mina of Knitting Expat Designs. These were the March socks. I um, have done one repeat of the pattern. You can kind of see it's got this kind of checkerboardy pattern um, or maze-like pattern, I guess, with knits and pearls. Um, the yarn is from Fruitful Fusion and it is her London Dusk colorway that she dyed in conjunction with the, um, the Pattern Club and it is 100% Superwash BFL. So those are ongoing. Those are my socks that I work on. I do a row or two um, during the day at work when I'm sitting waiting for reports to run. That's what I work on. Okay, and I think I've just got just two more. So this is probably the one you've been waiting for if you've been here a while. It's my White Queer's Craft Along Tote, and it's got my Muffy the Beaver pin from the Grocery Girls and Max the Knitter Lego Sean. Um, and this is my mom's sweater, Christmas sweater. The pattern that I'm using for my mom's sweater is the Long Line Cardigan by um, Hohi Locatelli. So this is it in all of its glory. Here's the shawl collar. It's got the armholes. I've joined for the body and I'm knitting my way down the body. I am fading six different colorways of Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock in and I'm on colorway, I'm just fading in colorway five um, on the body. So this is, as soon as I get that um, Snuggle is Real Cowl finished uh, up, I will, this is where I'm moving on to and will be the first project that I try to complete using the Gideon Method. So it has a lot of work left to do because it's a fingering weight sweater. Um, not sure 
you can watch some of my recent podcasts to get more information. And my next podcast, I hope, will have a lot more information on that one. So that is an active whip. And this is the last one. Okay, this is a um, Diana Couture bag as well. So it has these little divots there in the front. And then also you can use it on the side where you can put balls of yarn in and then pull them out from there. So this is yarn that is not cast on yet, but I am planning to do a knit along with a couple of friends, just the just the three of us. Um, we're doing a Jesse made designs along, um, and we each picked a, a different design and we're gonna cast it on. And I've had this yarn wound up. We've been planning this for, we were gonna do it last summer and then life got too busy. So we're starting it um, this coming week and I'm using Old Maiden Ant yarns. And this is her um, 801010 Merino Cashmere Nylon base. Um, and the colorway is Gecko. I think it was a one-off colorway. Um, so I have two skeins of it, a little bit lighter and darker, and I will be doing the Ripple Bralette out of this. I have enough to do that. So that will be cast on this week. And that's it. That is everything that I have in bags currently. Doesn't count for all the stuff behind me, but that's okay. So I think it's good to know uh, some stuff is going to get cleared out of bags. Some stuff it's good to know that I have um, uh, Christmas and holiday gifts and things like that planned and ready to go. So I will hopefully be able to kind of organize a little bit better and feel like I'm getting through some projects. So thank you so much for joining me today. That's all I have. That's all I wanted to do was the bag parade. I will be back hopefully next week with a regular episode where I'll go over um, any finished objects, uh, whips, um, stash enhancement, things like that. So if you like this episode, uh, if you're interested in the content that I'm providing, please feel free to like, subscribe, all that stuff. I don't normally mention that, but you know, it does help more people find the channel. So please do that if that, that's something that you're interested in. And until next time, bye.